check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. To the point, formative, entertaining, and protecting the Second Amendment, welcome back to Elster's Rifles Reloading. And once again, thank you for joining me here out at the private range. It is a little windy out here, so you might hear some of that wind. I do have my wind sock on, so hopefully that helps out. But I figured I'd have you join me on this adventure of getting this Vortex Venom Optic, a very affordable optic at that. And it's FFP, front focal plane, first focal plane, whatever you want to call it, something that you can get MSRP, 599 bucks, easily you can find out in the street online, especially with promo codes for under 500 bucks. Matter of fact, I just posted a deal on this on my Facebook page with promo code from Brownells, shipped for under $500, which is insane, especially for pretty good quality glass, obviously reputable with Vortex, lifetime transferable warranty and that's why damn near all my optics i own are vortex because of that very specific reason and i have this mounted up on my rock river arms 20 inch varmint bull barrel the wild chamber can shoot both 223 or 556 with an f3r machine one piece cantilever mount with 20 minutes of angle built in and when i say this thing is heavy duty very precise it is just that it is a very amazing quality mount that your average joe can aff uh, afford definitely check out that f3r machine and this i plan on keeping this optic on this particular firearm 24 7. once i get this zeroed in it's going to stay it's going to be on this firearm for the rest of its life most likely and so far my initial impressions are pretty amazing and I'm hoping this becomes one of my favorite go-to affordable optics because I plan on buying more of these. It has all the bells and whistles other than one thing and that's illumination. It does not have illumination. And to be honest with you, if you can keep the price down and not have illumination to keep that price down and keep it affordable for your average Joe, I'm all game because to be honest with you, I really don't use illumination that often. Usually the only time I'm using illumination is for deer hunting. Especially in the northern woods here at dusk and dawn, usually I'm using that illumination and that's about it. And to be honest with you, I don't use FFP scopes for hunting anyways. They're usually second focal plane or, S, or SFP optics when I go hunting. So that really doesn't bother me that much. Um, but I figured I'd have you join me with this on this adventure. We'll get the diopter set up, we'll get this zeroed in, and we'll do some really basic tracking tests here. Uh, but just a quick go over this Vortex Venom. You know, I believe these came out roughly a few months ago. And like I said, very affordable optic. And this has a five to 25 magnification range, a 56 millimeter objective, really, really big objective in there to suck that light in and concentrate that light down that tube and into your retina. Um, it has a tube size of 34 millimeters and this has a corresponding F3R machine, 34 millimeter uh, mount. Um, a length of 15.25 inches, a weight of 35 ounces, an eye relief of 4 to 3.7 inches, depending on what magnification you're on, and also a field of view at 100 yards of 21.2 feet or 4.7 feet, also depending on what magnification you're on. And the adjustment gradu graduations on here are 0.1 MRAD, or this is a mill-based optic. This is not minute of angle or MOA. Travel per rotation of 10 MRAD and total windage travel of 25 MRAD. And this also has what they call the Rev Stop Zero system. And also rocking the EBR-7C reticle. So I'm really excited about getting this going. And they also showing here on the end of this box, obviously Vortex unlimited, unconditional lifetime warranty. And that's a good reason why damn near all of my optics are Vortex because that very reason. No questions asked, you have a, an issue, send this in. It doesn't matter if you even drop it on the ground, they will fix it. And just to go over some of the items that come in the box, it comes with a cleaning cloth, a sunshade, bikini style caps, 
throw lever here. I'm gonna be honest with you. I tried putting this throw lever on. I was not impressed with this throw, throw lever at all. I thought it was pretty chintzy, uh, especially the Allen style screw that they put in this is way too small. Vortex, if you're listening, you need to get this swapped out with something a little more heavy duty, something a little more beefy. I will not be putting that on. I'm gonna try and see if I can find something that's a little bit bigger than what is included in the box. They come with a key here for taking your caps off or setting your zero stop and an Allen wrench, your rev stop limiter for your zero stops, and two manuals here, one for the reticle and one for the product. Not exactly gonna be going over that. Uh, most of this is pretty basic. Uh, I just want you guys to join me here on getting this zeroed on, take my initial shots. Um, I know some of you guys might have watched my previous scope on the Arcan Optics 6 to 24 FFP flavor, and I was shooting some once fired uh, 60 grain VMAX. I, I wish I would have grabbed that same ammunition. So I this actually happens to be a different batch with three fires on the brass. Uh, I'm hoping this ammo shoots just as well as that other ammo. I guess we'll find out. Um, I'm really kicking myself for not grabbing that same ammunition, but it is what it is. I'm not going to drive back. Um, so anyways, enough of the BS. Let's get this going. Now, one of the first things I recommend doing when you first mount up your optic is to make sure you adjust your diopter. And the name of the game here is to get a clear radical. The side focus is for getting that clear picture. So it's really, really important to make sure you adjust this before you do anything. Usually what I like to do is screw this all the way out, lefty loosey, set my side focus or parallax adjustment to infinity, and just making sure that you don't point this into the sun. Usually I will point this up into the clear blue sky or something like a white wall. And your eye and your brain will play tricks on you. Your brain and your eye will try to focus on a blurry reticle. So what you want to do is shut your eye. And what I like to do, like, like I said, have this screwed all the way out, lefty loosey. I'll open my eye. Obviously, it's going to be blurry right out of the gate, most likely. And I'll take a half turn, open my eye. It's getting a little bit more clear. Take a half turn, open my eye. Reticle is getting more clear. Shut my eye, turn a half turn, and that reticle is starting to become pretty darn clear. I'm gonna shut my eye, make fine adjustments here, and right about there, that's pretty good. I keep on opening and shutting my eye between adjustments, and I'd say right about there is perfect. I can't stress this enough to make sure that you do that before you do anything else. Now, next thing is I am going to get this zeroed in. So I'm inspecting this, make sure it is absolutely cleared. And I am going to pop this lower off. And this is where it really, really helps having a front bipod, especially with a lock on it and an assortment of sandbags that you can put in the back to prop up this upper. So for those that are absolutely new, I think you get the idea of what's going on here. I'm just centering that dinky little three inch circle in the middle of my bore, and then I'm gonna move up to my scope. And this is roughly at 16X magnification. And this is very difficult to get on camera, but I'm just gonna make that adjustment. And it really is that easy. And grab my modified brass catcher here also known as my range bag. Now, when I mounted up this optic, I made sure the reticle was level to the Earth's gravity. And I wish I had a mounted level on my optic. I just don't have that right now. But being that I know that this is level with my rifle, and especially with a bipod lock, I get this marginally close. All right, so I can see that I'm a little bit high there. So I'm just gonna make an adjustment here. I'm gonna put my crosshairs on the bullseye and adjust down until it's in line with my bullet hole. Probably just one click here and it be pretty much good to go. And that is pretty much spot on. Let's move this down to 100 yards. 
All right, so next I'm going to adjust my cheek weld, make sure this is just spot on. This is the Magpul PRS buttstock, so I can righty tighty lefty loosey the height of this cheek weld. So this is definitely way too high. So right about there. So every time I come down, I got instant perfect eye box. And next I'm going to adjust my side focus or parallax adjustment. And that's one of the nice things about having a bipod in the front and a sandbag in the back. You can kind of lock your entire rig down and get that bullseye on one of those paces down there at 100 yards. Blurry, that's pretty clear right there. Now I'm gonna bob my head up and down and make sure that that really fine dot on that cross here doesn't come off target. And right there it's moving, right there it's moving off the bullseye. And I would say right about there it doesn't move and I got a nice clear picture, reticle is clear. So I'm gonna look at this and it is exactly at 100. Let me get this unplugged here. And it is exactly 100 on the side focus. So that is awesome. So I can trust this at least at 100 yards. I'll probably end up testing this at 300, 600 yards beyond, at least for side focus. But at least for 100 yards, I know I can trust that. And that is spectacular. If you guys happen to watch that Arc and Optics uh, review that I just did a couple weeks ago, you'll notice that my side focus wasn't even remotely close to being accurate. It was actually roughly at reading 40 on the side focus with a 100 yard adjustment. So you can't always trust this, but the fact that this is that accurate, that's awesome. So these are three quarter inch pasties here. Um, nice aim small, miss small circle. Probably two or three of these on here just to make sure that my zero is good to go. All right, so that's three shots. Looks like a sub minute group there. And I'm going to make that adjustment down. And it looks like I need to go to the left ever so slightly. And that is a pretty smoking group once again. It looks like I went and shot past that ever so slightly. Let's take another three shots. Very well could have been the wind there. Uh, it's definitely windy here for sure. I think I'm going to take three more shots here. All right, I'm going to go directly south of the big circle, right underneath it. That's a pretty sick group. Uh, that looks pretty darn good. I think I'm gonna stick with that. All right, we'll get this paused here. And not too bad. Um, so this is our first shot at 50 yards, made a correction. And move this to 100 yards, took three shots. I'd say that's roughly half, five-eighths, three-shot group. Made, look at me, made a little bit of an overcorrection here. And that's probably about a quarter minute of angle group. So readjust it up here. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. That might have been me or the wind. And the last three shots here, that's probably three-eighths, probably just under a half minute of angle. So that looks pretty good. I was aiming it right at the bottom of that circle. So I think I'll stick with that zero. Now, this is by no means a serious <laughs> tracking test of the scope. It's more of me just screwing around, having a good time at the range. But this 
square is exactly six inches by six inches. Our bullseye is here. If I want to shoot in the corner here, I am going to adjust three inches to the right, three inches up, or roughly about 0.8 mils. And I'm going to adjust back and keep on going around the four corners of the circle and see how it works out. And I got my rifle level down there. I wish I had a level on my optic, but I just don't right now. Um, so I am going to make sure that this is marginally level, at least at 100 yards. And the way I'm going to do that is this. So this is perfectly level here. So I'm going to adjust this target until it is level with this. Like I said, I'm just screwing around having a good time on my vacation. That should be good enough. I am going to take three shots in the middle and then I'm going to adjust 0.8 mils to the right, 0.8 mils up. And I'm going to work my way around each corner of that square. 15 total rounds here, three shots each. So. And this is definitely by no means a serious tracking test. It's more of me just having fun at the range on my vacation. But I'm going to start right out of the gate here, right in the middle with three total shots. And I'll make those adjustments. So not too bad, definitely sub MOA. So I am going to adjust up eight total clicks here or 0.8 mils so one two three four five six seven eight and i am going to adjust to the right 0.8 so one two three four five six seven eight now i'm still aiming dead center of that square And that looked like a pretty sick group. It couldn't get any more center on the corner of that square. So I am going to adjust back down. So I'm going to adjust down 8 mil, 0.8 mils. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to adjust left again. 0.8 mils. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm back on bullseye. And I am going to adjust up and to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to adjust to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0.8 mils. And once again, the center of that group is pretty much perfect. So let's adjust down and to the right. So down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we are going to adjust down and to the left the bottom left-hand corner. So we're going to go down 0.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we'll take another three shots here. And once again, that looks pretty damn good. So let's go back to the center, going up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're going to adjust to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we're going back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And to the right, 0. 0.8 mils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that looks pretty good. We are out of ammo. Let's go down and check and see how we did. Get this stopped. Shut the power off. Not take a screenshot. <laughs> and this looks really really good you know our first three shots here i'd say that's probably oh that's roughly about a three-eighths half inch group uh second here same again three-eighths probably just under a half inch i'll know better once i can score this up 
This here is probably just under a half, probably right around a half, and that's about three eighths and a half inch groups. So pretty sick groups. I really inexpensive Rock River Arms varmint bow barrel 20 inches long and also a very inexpensive optic and it just goes to show that you can get pretty amazing performance for very very little money and i would say the center of this is pretty darn good on each of these groups i probably could adjust this ever so slightly but i am more than satisfied with that So for my next parlor trick <laughs> is uh, I am going to draw a 36 inch level line on this cardboard if I can. So I'm starting out at zero. So I'll make sure I got this level right up there. I'm going to draw a 36 inch line. Sure, I'm back on level there. So, that looks good enough. So, 0 to 36. And just to make sure, I'm going to put some 3 quarter inch pasties on here. And for good measure, I'm going to put a cider group off to the side just to make sure my zero is good. One mil adjustment at 100 yards, not 100 meters, but 100 yards, one mil adjustment is 3.6 inches. So in theory, I can take a 10 mil adjustment, 3.6 times 10, you just pretty much move that decimal point over one, and 10 mil adjustment will make a 36 inch or one yard adjustment. And I got this completely level. I know that my optic or reticle is level to Earth's gravity. Let's see how this goes. So this should be pretty interesting. Let's load up nine total rounds here. A quick double check my level here. Like I said, I wish I had a level on my optic, but I don't. This will work for now. Lock this home. All right, so I'm gonna start out with a cider shot all the way to the bottom right there. And that looks pretty good, all in the pasty. I'm sure I could adjust it ever so slightly, but that's pretty good for a three quarter inch pasty. So, I am going to start out at the very bottom here and make a 10 mil adjustment. So I'm going to quick just double check this. Still level, good to go. All right, so start out at zero on that ruler, the very bottom. Not too bad, all in the pasty. And this is where I'm going to make a 10 mil adjustment. So we are going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I'm still aiming at the bottom. Looking at the very top there, that looks pretty good. It's a little bit higher than the pasty. And here is the first three shots, probably about a 3 8 group. And the second shot, I'd say about a half inch group. All in the pasty there. If I was to say the middle of that group is pretty darn center on that pasty. And 36 inches up. Looks like I'm just ever so slightly above that pasty. Uh, looks like I got a bullet and a bullet hole here. I'd say it's about a half inch group. 
maybe a little under half inch, about three eighths. So I would say that's pretty darn good. And I would say the center of this group is a little off to the left, but I would say not too bad. I got six rounds left. I might as well burn these up. Now, the one thing I did notice about this Vortex Venom in comparison to that Arcan Optics 6 to 24 is the eye box is definitely a lot more unforgiving. So that is very nice. Um, so let's burn up these six shots and see how this goes. So I'm gonna try my best to get this on audio and video, being that it's so damn windy out. Uh, but I got this set roughly about 60, 75 yards away. And I'm gonna try my best to zoom in here through the magnification range. So I'm the low end here. I'm gonna work my way up to eight power, 10 power. Hopefully this is zooming in between powers here, 12. 15, 20, and all the way up at 25. Now you see roughly past 20, you start to see that chromatic aberration there, especially in the upper right hand side of that white piece of soffit. Uh, I'm gonna play with my side focus or parallax adjustment. So blurry, 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 clear, blurry on the other end of the spectrum here. So I would say right about there, at least looking through my camera, I'd say that's pretty clear, right about there. And that's reading close to roughly 60 on the side focus. So that's pretty darn accurate, so that's really nice. Uh, but like I said, you know, you wanted some really clear glass, you're gonna have to dip down more in towards the roughly 2019 area. You can see that chromatic aberration starting to disappear. And you start getting above that 20, especially at the 25, that chromatic aberration definitely comes back. It's, but, you know, for very inexpensive optic, I would say that is more than suitable. Well, all in all, I say I'm pretty happy with this optic. Getting some really good accuracy results. You know, nothing serious in regards to this tracking, but just having some fun out the range. But at least accuracy wise, I think, I don't think I've had a single group that wasn't well under one inch. I think this one might be hovering about an inch. Uh, but what we got, three eighths, maybe half inch. This is about a quarter. This is about five eighths maybe. And I'll score these up and paste that into this video here for you guys who got more of a realistic idea. As for our playing around having some fun at the range box test here for tracking. Uh, pretty darn good results. I'd say it's pretty consistent. Uh, accuracy is definitely there. I mean, I don't think any of these are over a half inch. Like I said, I'll paste that in. Uh, roughly three eighths to a half inch, three eighths, three eighths a half inch, three eighths half inch, and roughly three eighths. So accuracy is definitely there. And I'm pretty happy with those tracking results, at least goofing around at the range. Um, as for making the 10 mil adjustment, 36 inch test here at hundred yards, you know, we got three bullets in the pasty here. So I would say the zero on this is very consistent and making that 10 mil adjustment, 36 inches up. I would say it's pretty darn close. I would say it's maybe 0.1, maybe 0.2 mils off. Uh, but I would say that's pretty acceptable. Um, but all in all, I would say I'm more than pleased. You know, as for the glass itself, I would say it's got a little of an edge over the Arcan Optics 6 to 24 and a little bit less of that chromatic aberration. Um, obviously, it's a little bit more expensive FFP optic, um, but I would say it's got a little bit of an edge above and beyond that uh, arc and optic than the 624 power. You know, once you get past that 20 magnification range, you start to run in some of that chromatic aberration. Uh, the glass gets a little bit milky, but it's 
I would say, like I said, for such an inexpensive optic, I'm more than pleased with this. What I thought it was really nice, at least with the one that was sent to me, is the side focus adjustments were very, very accurate. I mean, it was almost right on the money at 100 yards and also over here at roughly 60 to 70 yards. About, about the only thing I wish this had was a little bit more tactile clicks. I mean, they're definitely audible, and I'll see if I can get this, especially with all this wind. So they're definitely audible. Um, I wish they were a little bit more tactile in regards to the clicks, but you know, I, it is what it is. It's a sub $600 FFP optic, and I'm more than happy with that. You know, also pairing this up with the F3R one piece mount, I think this is gonna stay on this uh, RRA 20 inch varmint bull barrel for the rest of its life. And I'm more than happy with it. Other than that, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, if you enjoyed this video, enjoy my content. Scratch my back and I'll continue to scratch your back with not only subscribe, like, and share. Hit that notification bell. When you hit that notification bell, make sure you hit notification all. Become a Patreon, it helps out more, you know. And I will see you guys in the next video. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. FFP flavor. And these gnats are driving me crazy. Let's take a shower and some off in northern woods of Wisconsin. Oh. It's not ticks, it's gnats. Getting this zeroed in and taking some shots at 100 yards, and like I said, it is ultra, ultra windy out. Tracking and functions test, and it isn't. So, where did my ammunition index card blow off to? <sighs> Getting these staples to stick deck. That should work. Hopefully, I got 36 inches left on this cardboard. I guess we'll find out. I just barely got it. Let's see if this. Boy.